Sheriff, thank you so much for taking the time. Oh, thank you, Larry, for the opportunity. First of all, Sheriff, uh, can you give us an update on the condition of the two sheriff's deputies who were shot ambush style in the face, in the head? I just visited the, the female deputy uh, this morning, and they are doing a lot better. They're both at home recovering. They've got a long road ahead of them and getting themselves uh, fully recovered, a lot of surgeries and therapies down the road, but uh, thankfully it looks like they're going to be okay. Sheriff, is a story I heard true that the female sheriff was shot in the face and then nevertheless was able to render first aid to her fallen comrade? Is that what happened? That is exactly what happened. She wow. took a round to the face and to both arms, wow. and she was able to apply a tourniquet to her, to her partner, get him behind safety, behind a, a steel column, and radioed for help, and then when she couldn't speak anymore, her partner grabbed the mic and got the mic, and then he finished the radio transmission, so help could arrive. I'm talking to L.A. County Sheriff Alex Villanueva. Sheriff, as you know, uh, a fellow Angelino named LeBron James has frequently weighed in when there's been a police shooting, uh, a police shooting that he considers to be unjust. Uh, and you issued a challenge to him uh, to step up and offer reward money for the still-at-large suspect uh, who ambushed these two sheriff deputies. Has he responded? Uh, no, unfortunately. Mm. Well, he's been kind of busy. It's playoffs, I guess. Uh, yes. Now, Sheriff, uh, let's talk about your career. Right now, uh, several local officials have called for your resignation, claiming that you uh, have not been sufficiently transparent when some of these high-profile shootings have taken place. What's your reaction to all of this? Utter nonsense. We've been, as tra we've been more transparent than all sheriffs in the past combined. And there's ne never enough to satisfy these demands for transparency. And they want to jeopardize the integrity investigation in order to be, quote, unquote, transparent. And I'm not going to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. um, what about body cams? There was a uh, experiment done at Rialto, city of Rialto, uh, not long ago, where the officers, as you probably know, were equipped with body cams. And uh, during that year, the complaints against the police fell 90 percent, not because the police changed their behavior, of course, Sheriff. It's because the civilians changed their behavior. They stopped being sassy. They stopped challenging the officers. As a result, the officers did not have to use the same kind of force they had to use before. So it seems to me body cams benefit not just the civilians, but probably more the, the law enforcement officers than anybody else. 100 percent. As we've seen before, Body cameras almost always invariably exonerate the peace officer. Just It shows they're just doing their job, and people are being knuckleheads out there while they're trying to do their job. So why don't your 18,000 sworn deputies have them? Well, my first week in office, that was priority number one, body-worn cameras. We resuscitated a dead project from my predecessor, who killed it in 2017, and we got it faster, better, and cheaper. We presented it to the board, and that's where the foot dragging and the obstacles started. Mm -hmm. And Mark Ridley Thomas led the charge. He himself was responsible for a six-month delay in starting the RFP process. Sheriff, I take it you have no, no intentions of resigning. Uh, no, <laughs> not at all. All right, Sheriff, I want your take in general on what's going on, this uh, Black Lives Matter, this defund the police movement. First, give me your take on what happened to George Floyd. What happened to George Floyd was, uh, unfortunately, it, it, there was some, some crime involved. It was a criminal act. There was obviously gross negligence and indifference to human life and displayed by the four officers. However, bear in mind that, from what I understand, George Floyd was also at the same time under influence of probably a lethal dose of fentanyl. Mm -hmm. So we, you have a lot of things coming together at the same time, and what those officers did is inexcusable and is not what represents law enforcement at all. Uh, Jacob Blake, that's the one who was shot seven times in the back by the Kenosha, Wisconsin police. Your take on that one? Uh, that's when you see incompetence manifest itself in, right there in law enforcement. It happens in every profession, but there's two sides of that story. There's the right side of the minivan where there's a struggle, a violent struggle, a tasing that didn't work, and there's a fight, and then there's a, on the other side, the left side of it, where they're trying to pull the guy by the shirt and shoot him in the back, and that's, you got a tale of two sides of the minivan going on there. Mm -hmm. uh, Sheriff, uh, talking to Sheriff, uh, L.A. County Sheriff Alex Villanueva, Sheriff, I know you have your hands full. Did you happen to watch the press conference that was done by the AG of Kentucky where he outlined why the grand jury declined to bring criminal charges against the three white officers who were involved in the shooting death of the black woman, Breonna Taylor? Did you have a chance to see that? I got the highlights of it. Yes, I did. And your opinion is? 
I think he followed the rule of law. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a, there's a mob wants to do one thing, but he has an obligation to follow the rule of law and the facts, and that's where it took him to make that decision, and we have to support that. 